You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another fantastically majestic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and I am not sure what that means, but I'm excited about it. No one Hope knows what too. it means. It's provocative. Gotcha. Hope you are having a great day. Hope you are excited, like we are, to be a part of episode 639. And uh, yeah, interesting question. We're going to have to do a little interpreting of this particular question. Yeah, it's not really clear which aspect of flying this question kind of mm-hmm. is pertaining to. So we'll hit them both. We'll hit all of them. All, oh, there's more than both. We will kill three birds. With one prop. No. Oh. oh, wow. Okay. Poor birds. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Play the question. <laughs> Arr, mateys, if you can, from New Jersey, with a question about launching from a moving ship. Arr. There be a pirate cruise ship sightseeing, it be, that wants some aerial footage. If I had to launch from the ship versus land, what would be a safe velocity meters per second say that I could launch from and not risk a flyaway. If you know there be such a thing, let me know. This is very hard to do a pirate accent. About my 15th take on this. So arr, answer me question, you swabbies. Arr. Number one, I appreciate the dedication to getting that pirate accent sent off. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, and I actually thought it was pretty good. So, Sailing the seas. Well done. Now, as it relates to the... Yes, sorry. I interrupted. No, it's okay. I'll get you with the cannon later. <laughs> okay. Can't wait. Um, so the, there's a couple of ways to interpret this question. I believe the correct interpretation is that you're on a boat. He's asking how fast should the drone accelerate into the air? See, I think he's saying how fast... What's the velocity? The, the fastest velocity of the boat in which can I still take off and not have a problem? Uh, okay, we certainly established that that was one option, but Screw I don't it. Let's know answer why both. he okay. would do it meters per second. But it's cool, whatever. Do um, both. So if he's like, okay, so here's one thing: all right, if you're taking off from a boat, first of all, you should always take off into the wind, which means if the boat is creating more wind than is in the atmosphere around you, you need to be taking off in the direction that the boat is going. Now, if you're ever flying off of an aircraft carrier, you'll notice that the aircraft carrier is also <sighs> driving straight into the wind for takeoffs and landings. Mm. So, as I guess I would know this since I've done so many boat commercials now. Um, so, if you are underway, as they would say in the boating world, um, and your boat pilot is at the helm, mm-hmm. then you should be taking off on the bow. Is, okay. it, is this too many boating terms for you? I, yet, I think a little interpretation would be <laughs> appreciated. <laughs> I love boating so much. Uh, you know what boat stands for, Rob? What? Bust out another thousand. <laughs> thousand dollars? Yes. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Especially those boats you've been hanging out uh, on. Yeah, bust out another hundred thousand. Exactly. <laughs> um, but anyway, so you should always be taking off into the wind. If that means you're taking off from the bow as the boat is underway, you should do that. Um, also, you should get up and away as fast fast as possible. So literally I would recommend taking off in sport mode because something that I've seen with phantoms is that when they spin up, they do that double woo woo, right? Mm -hmm. And it kind of almost lifts the drone off, but they're just testing the motors to make sure it can handle the load. And essentially Hmm. what I would do, first of all, if you're taking off from a boat underway, remember you got to follow FAA rules. You have to be in a sparsely populated area. You not, you cannot be in a densely populated area of which are mentioned in the sectional maps. So you can look that up. But let's just assume he is in a sparsely populated area, okay? Okay. Chances are if you're in a boat, you probably are. Cool. Assumption made. um, Anyway, so if he's flying uh, and taking off on this boat, first of all, I do not recommend uh, taking off when the boat is underway. In fact... Really? In fact, every single time I am on a boating commercial, I make them turn the boat off. When I take off. No kidding. Yeah, for two reasons. Okay. Reason number one. Mm -hmm. Normally when I'm taking off, it's on the back end of the boat or the stern. Okay. For those of you boaters out there. Mm -hmm. Um, And 
normally in these wake boats, we'll call them, the engine is right under the back of the boat. Mm -hmm. Now, why is that a problem? I have no idea, but I think you're going to tell us. The alternator is the problem. So it is oh, in, it is literally creating magnetic interference right below you. Wow, okay? yeah. Okay, so you want that engine turned off. Number two, most boats have a stereo system. And what does that mean in modern day? How do they control that thing? How do they control it? Mm -hmm. With a remote? With their phone? Oh, Operating okay. off of Bluetooth? Oh, like... Whatever, Spotify or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. another mm -hmm. huge piece yeah. of interference yeah. on the Got to have the music blasting. No, you got to turn that B off. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no. So, I mean, if you're boating, you got to have that music oh, blasting. Oh, yeah, 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 true. But when we're taking off, the music turns off. So, right. all right, Because cool. the Bluetooth interference is, is bad. It both can got cause a flyaway. Now, let's say you're on a cruise ship, with, which, yeah. by the way, I've flown off of cruise ships, uh, uh, four cruise ships. I have flown off of... Um, Pirate ships, thanks to Marriott and Cabo San Lucas. Very cool. Um, I have done lots of boating stuff, and I've even tried to take off from a moving boat that was a tour boat mm -hmm. uh, back in Virginia Beach, and, and we were not in Oceana's airspace, if you are from Virginia Beach. Um, and I actually couldn't take off from the tour boat because I had too much steel in the boat, and I was having magnetic interference errors. Now, one thing that you guys should be aware of is that if you are taking off from a boat underway, you should not rely on GPS whatsoever. Because if you're taking off from a boat that's underway, you're probably not going to get a reliable GPS signal, number one. And as soon as you set the home point, hmm. chances are that's going to be 100 feet behind you within a few seconds. <laughs> right. So... Yeah, so, so when that becomes are, worthless to you. Exactly. So yeah. GPS is off off for sure. Yeah. But with a Phantom, you have to make sure that your IMU is reading properly, otherwise you will lose the drone. Now, one thing that I will say is that hmm. when you take off from a boat, if you notice that your camera horizon is kind of drifting down to the right and it kind of drifts down to the left, what I do is I stop all input controls to the drone and let it just hover there and wait for the camera to articulate back. If I'm getting a good reading on all of my sensors, I continue to fly. But if I'm not, if I'm getting a lot of error warnings, like IMU warning, um, I'm going to bring it down. If I get a compass warning, normally I don't take any action. Okay. I know As in you fly normally. I continue to fly because okay. I always fly in attitude mode, so I'm not using GPS whatsoever. Right. Um, so now if you're noticing that the drone, once you take off, is kind of moving in a small circle, like it's kind of, like imagine like you're, look, you're, you're taking a, okay, I don't want to go there. Uh, let's say you're <laughs> looking at the uh, toilet, the toilet bowl, as the water is going down into this little, this kind of like tornado funnel. Mm -hmm. If your drone is moving in a flight pattern that's kind of like the top of a tornado, where it's like a little toilet bowl motion, uh -huh. you should land immediately. What is that telling you? You're about to have a flyaway. Oh. Yeah, the toilet bowl is the quintessential way to know that your drone is not operating properly. That's bad news. So, And the precursor to that is the horizon floating. Oh, okay. So, so watch for that mm -hmm. first. So in terms of the speed of the boat that is underway, is there a limit to how fast it can be going and you still take off? I have no idea how fast well, like, cruise ships r run. Cruise ships don't normally travel too fast. I wouldn't think flying so. Flying around them is very, very easy. But flying okay. around tour boats, uh, wakeboarding boats, not wake surfing boats, wakeboarding boats, and other high-speed boats, you've got to make sure that the boat is at least ten moving at least 10 miles an hour slower than your top speed of the drone. Hmm. Because what if there is a headwind and the boat's going 30 miles an hour, and there's a headwind of 10 miles an hour, but the drone can only go 40 miles an hour. So it's really more about landing than it is about taking off. Yes. If you're going to try to land when it's moving, and if you're on a cruise ship or something like that, then you are. Another reason why the Phantom is the best drone on the planet for the money. Because hmm. there's legs to catch the thing. Yeah, seriously. And honestly, I've caught... So I had another thing, too, that I want to talk about when taking off from boats... So we said if this if the question is pertaining to how fast does the drone need to be moving in order to take it off properly, first of all, whenever you're flying over water, you're supposed to do a battery test before you fly. So that means, obviously, you plug the battery in, you make sure that the voltage is showing at a normal rate. But a lot of people are not taking statistics on their drones. I'm a little analytical, a little weird like that, okay? 
if your drone battery is reading 4.20 to 4.25 volts, you could have a problem. Hmm. If you're not reading 4.29, like on the new Inspire 2s, this could actually be an indicator that your battery cells are not aligned. Hmm. Now, if I take the drone off instantaneously and I rack that elevation as high as I can go and it drops below, say, 3.45 volts, you're going to have a problem. Hmm. But you're going to know right there that you're going to have a problem so you can bring it right back to you. This right. is another reason you don't want to take off while the boat is moving. Yeah. Because if the boat is moving and you get a battery voltage error or you put a battery that only has 30% left in it on accident because you weren't paying attention because all your friends are like, man, that's a cool drone, dude. <laughs> then guess what? You're not going to be able to move up at all. In fact, it's going to start auto landing and you can only move laterally, which means if it starts auto landing at 30 feet, you only have 60 to 70 feet laterally that you can move and land the drone. Otherwise, it's going in the water and bye bye. Yikes. Do that's, you see like the layers quite, of information? Yeah. There's a lot of cautionary telling in there. Yeah, I if know. you will. Well, I'm hoping to do a another subject tracking course here with Seth Spanis. It sounds like we could do a whole video series on just taking off from boats and the various aspects of that. Very interesting. So one of the, the premises of his question was, if I take off too fast, there is the potential with some sort of direct correlation for a flyaway. Is that a, a real correlation? Like if I'm if I take off too fast, that increases the chance of a flyaway? No, not at all. Okay. It's the environment in which you fly. Yeah. But a lot of these boats, you know, they are fiberglass, but they use steel mm -hmm. as support beams and whatnot. Right. For, you know, for, for example, for mounting the engine. Um, so you really got to be careful about magnetic interference. Like I even know if you're on the move, like I would even recommend someone holding the drone to make sure that that person's body is taking um, essentially the movement mm -hmm. out of it. Right. And in all honesty, I think you're going to have a better chance of, uh, of a takeoff if someone's holding it mm. because if you're underway, again, there are so many issues you can have when flying. In fact, I, I think even sitting here, I would just recommend against it. Even somebody who's on a cruise ship and they really want to get some footage of Unless that. they have special permission sure. from the cruise ship captain, they should never, ever take off from a cruise ship. Assuming they have that, though, speaking technically, All right, well, just be careful. I think there's less than 10 people in the world that have that permission right now as far as I, the last mm. time that I heard oh, wow. recent talks about this, which okay. was last September, but you know, that could be changed. But very, very, very few people have the authority to do that. So I just want to make that blatantly clear uh, to all of you rebels out there. So. <laughs> That's right. Get permission. Obviously do it the right way. Do it the right way. Fly. Show them why it's cool. Get down to their emotional level. You'll have fun. Absolutely. Cool. Well, anyway, I that's think good stuff. That was deep. That's interesting. I'm brain dead. Let's go. All right. All right. On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. If you have a question, go to askdroneu.com, upload that question just as soon as you can, and maybe do it in a pirate voice and it'll get played a little faster. <laughs> that's right. That's going to do it for us, mateys. My name is Captain Paul. And I'm Rob. And you're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. <laughs>